Good morning, everyone. There we go. Listening to the, uh, the intro, what I would give to have 140 employees right now. That would just be awesome. What I'd give to even close to 500 student employees would be awesome. So what I'm here to talk to you about is, you know, a very exciting topic for me, for our team, for our program. I know that uh, here, I used to hear my grandparents as a kid talk about robots would take on. Okay, maybe I have to stand still. This isn't going to go well. All right. Um, so as a oh, that'll work. Um, as a kid, you know, my grandparents used to always say robots are going to take all of our jobs. That never really happened, right? That in some industries, to some aspect, it has. But technology has just increased. Um, I remember when McDonald's launched the automatic cup filler. Right? It would drop the cup down and it would fill it up. That was the start, right? That was the start of the end for, for employees. Um, fast forward to today, and it, it just hasn't happened so far, right? So I think we can all agree that the landscape of the food service industry has changed dramatically over the last three years, and it's continuing to change. And if we don't start to adapt with it and change with it, right, we're going to have problems moving into the future. Our labor situation isn't going to change anytime soon for the most part, so we have to look at ways around it. So really, the age of automation is now. When we talk about automation, when we talk about robotics, we have to be intentional about them. I know it's very easy to go out and see a new cool piece of equipment. It's shiny. It looks awesome. But you have to ask yourself, how does it benefit your program, right? Do you have a problem that you're trying to solve? If you're implementing something and there's no problem, um, or it's not a service you need, you're kind of creating a problem all within itself. So first question, do you have a problem you're trying to solve? The second question is, you have to understand the benefits and how it's going to affect your team. You're going to have members of your team on every end of the spectrum. When we launched our delivery robots, we had individuals from, yep, this is the start. This is going to start to replace us to, wow, this is awesome. I'm excited to be part of this program. I'm excited to be part of this initiative um, that we're the second largest campus to launch this at the same time. How does it benefit your staff? And how does it benefit your customers, right? Are you able to offer your customer a more consistent pro uh, product? Are you able to offer them an expanded uh, level of services? Are you able to offer them expanded hours of operation? Right? Are you able to offer them food or services when you traditionally would not be open? So going to our first implementation was um, our autonomous delivery vehicles. So we got a call in May of 2019 uh, from a company, and immediately we knew we had a problem. Right? Students that are coming to us have grown up with DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub at this point. We know that they are juggling more than they've ever juggled in the past. So we needed to find a way to offer them convenience of this. We also knew they were getting delivery from the community. So how could we bring that business and revenue back to our campus? We also knew, and this was pre-pandemic, that there was no way that we could staff a delivery program. So right, boom, we have our problem. We, have to, um, we, we know that the, the issues that we have to address. So how did we bring our staff along with it, right? How did we bring them into the conversation and into um, the process. Um, so we started those conversations. We were, this was kind of the first major implementation like this on our campus. So we had to have internal and external stakeholders, right? We had to answer the questions from our internal partners. What happens when a snow plow hits it? What happens when it gets stuck in the snow? What happens when a student throws it in Lake Mendota? <laughs> None of those things have happened to date, and we're three years into it. Then we had to talk with our external partners, right? Our campus is separated into two areas. We have campus-maintained streets and sidewalks, and then we have city-maintained streets and sidewalks. Well, the city um, had not approved these autonomous vehicles. Even though the state had legislature that they were OK, the city did not approve it. So we had to work very closely with the mayor's office um, and some local aldermen to kind of make them feel comfortable right, about it, right? We had to answer the same questions. Madison is a downtown campus, a uh, lot of traffic, a lot of pedestrians. 
Um, so we had to answer their concerns too. So after we got through all that, we're ready to launch November 19, November of 2019. For us to launch a program like this on a college campus, its conversation started in May and we're launching in November, that is like light speed for this to happen. So it was pretty exciting because we're actually creating a culture, not only within our campus, but within the city of accepting technology and accepting uh, this type of automation. So we launched uh, November 2019, 30 orders a day. Our campus card wasn't online. Students had to use debit card, credit card. Um, so it didn't really get the, the traction that we wanted right at the beginning. Fast forward to January of 2020, our campus card's online. Students get back from, uh, from winter break 300 orders a day, 400 orders a day. We hit close to 500 orders a day, pandemic hits. Everybody goes home, faculty, staff, students, dining stays, we're the only ones left on campus, um, with a handful of students that could not go home because of you know, Wi-Fi, safer to stay where they are, whatever the case may be. So it was kind of weird during that time to look out into a downtown setting and you see no traffic, no people, no activity. You just see our robots making deliveries. <laughs> so that, that was kind of, you know, well, what's going on here? Um, so we hit those close to 500 orders a day. So then we had to ask ourselves, how are we gauging our success? You know, we saw check averages jump around 60%. Um, we didn't really use revenue as a gauge of success because we didn't, we couldn't say that that student wouldn't have come into our facilities anyway. But what, how we did gauge success was the feedback, the feedback from the students. I can get out of class, I can place an order, I get to my residence hall, the robot's waiting for me at the door, I get my food, I go up to my room to do my homework or whatever it is they're actually gonna do for the rest of the day. I'm working in the library with a group, we're working on a project, don't want to leave, we can order food and have it brought to us. Um, so we're giving students the gift of time and we're giving them the convenience that they need. So that's how we truly gauge success. The other way we gauge success were staff were very excited. Our teams were excited about the process because it helped alleviate some foot traffic in our dining facilities. So when we have a seating capacity issue, which again was one of our problems, when staff look up from behind their serving areas and they see wall-to-wall -wall people, that creates an internal form of chaos, right? An anxiety of, of being extremely busy. So we helped clear out some of our dining facilities. And not only that, but we saw a change in the city and their culture and their accepting of, of, the, um, uh, accepting of these type of technology too. So as we did this, and I talk about creating a culture of accepting this and embracing technology and it being part of your program. Um, it, it, we, I mean, our campus is kind of known for this now. These guys really are, students call them our campus pet. Um, st students, will, when they move on to campus, they take selfies with them, they pet them, they dress up like them as Halloween. Um, <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of fascinating. I even get amazed by them today at night when they're lined up to go back home to go to bed at the end of their shift, and you just see the orange flags and the headlights all lined up going down the street. It's just, it's really awesome. So three years later, students are still fascinated with this. So what, what do students do when they're fascinated? They create memes, right? So this is me pretty much every day when I still see them. Uh, so we got Woody and a little buzz, right? Pretty much every student when they come across a robot. I was a huge Terminator fan as a kid, so I really like this one. Um, Skynet, no, these guys aren't going to take over the world. We don't need to call John Connor. We're going to be okay. It's, the, str the struggle is real. You want to pet these guys. You want to get in their way. You want to see what they're going to do. Um, and when you do that, so they speak in about 25 different languages. Uh, during holidays, we will have them say special messages. If it's around a cultural holiday, we'll have them say it in that culture's language. Um, if it's Valentine's, we'll have them say Happy Valentine's Day, those types of things. But it's really hard not to want to interact with them. And when you do, if you stand in their way, they're very polite. Excuse me, I'm trying to work, please move. And then they increasingly get more angry as you do not get it, if you don't get out of their way to the point where alarms start going off and lights start flashing and so on and so forth. 
so, and we've even had to the point where students will call if they think that the robots are being messed with. Sometimes the, the company will collect the robots at night instead of having them travel back home on their own, they'll uh, pick them up in a van. We've had people call and say that people are stealing the robots. <laughs> and it's actually just the company picking them up to take them back home. And then you can't have memes without them being your star running back, right? <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the robot led the, led the Big Ten in rushing yards this year. So as we continue to talk about automation and what is our, our next step. So our next launch is going to be a pizza robot. So this guy makes about 100 pizzas an hour. It will, um, all of you in, in, op, in production know that one of the most important parts of a pizza is consistency, right? Proper sauce, right amount of cheese, right amount of toppings so that your cook times are right. This will help that. We normally have students that do this work. So we, and students work about two hours, right? So we have a new employee literally every two hours trying to do this work. Is this going to fill a vacancy? Maybe. Are we going to not hire because we have this? No. But what we will do is we're going to reassign those employees to do more meaningful work than make them put toppings on a pizza. And that's what your staff need to see is that when you implement these things that you're not cutting, you're not cutting staff but you're having them do more meaningful work and bringing the hospitality back into your organization, bringing the customer service level back up within your organization. Hi, how are you doing? How can I help you with any questions you have? Those types of things. It's not to cut labor. If there's an instance where you can cut labor, you need to show that you're reinvesting that back into your team. More important than ever today is to reinvest back into your team and to show that you, you're not cutting things just to add to your bottom line, but you're going to add back in from a professional development standpoint. You can put those uh, labor dollars back into raises for your team, whatever the case may be. So this will allow us to make our pizzas at one location and ship out to all six of our dining facilities. So that's going to be a huge consistency perk. It's going to be a huge, again, hand savings that they can then do something that's more meaningful. Cashierless retail. Um, this has been talked about a lot. We put a lot of resources into cashiering. Um, and again, we're not going to not have cashiers. We're not going to not hire those folks. But they can work in our convenience stores. They can make sure our shelves are stocked. They can make sure they're faced. They can interact with the customers. Can I help you find anything? Can I answer any questions? Those types of things. Again, bringing that customer service level back up to where it needs to be for the hospitality industry that we are, which I feel we've kind of lost over the last oh, three, four, five years, but that's a whole other 15 minute discussion. So today I want to thank you all for having me. I really want you to take away from this is that at a show of hands, who in here has some sort of robotics or automation in your, in your operation now? A few? It's really something that we all need to start looking at. You're no longer early adopters. This is, it's been around, it's how we're going to survive, it's how we're going to get into the future. Um, and it's how we're going to make sure that we're still able to thrive. Make sure you're intentional about your implementations. Make sure you bring your teams along with you. Um, and make sure that you show that anything you save, you're reinvesting back into your program, not just to, to throw onto the bottom line. So again, thank you all today uh, for having me.